Okay, so I was listening to this little debatesy waitsy between the atheist and the Christian opposing camps. And the title of the debate was called, Why Can't We Be Friends? 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 Uh, the subject was, you know, can we all just get along? You, you're Christian. I'm Christians. You're atheists. I say God is real. You say you got any evidence for that? Why can't we all just get along? You have any evidence for God? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, now, the subject of said debate was, you know, there's so much fighting going on between these opposing ideologies. And you know what the Beatles say? They say, life is very short and there's no time for fussing and fighting, my friends. So, what was the gist of this debate? The gist is, well, trying to come to some resolution. Uh, obviously, we disagree. <laughs> we, the Christians, and you, the atheists, we have shall we say, a disagreement on the subject of whether God, in fact, exists or not. But why this should cause so much conflagration and emotional intensity and angst between people who disagree on this subject, you know, it's somewhat, it's not necessarily a given. Uh, I was on a show, the non sequitur judge, the non sequitur show, I believe it's called, um, and there we, we, they were atheists and I was a Christian. There was no animosity between us. We had a long, reasonable conversation about the things I believe versus the things they believe. Uh, that is, in fact, the point of a conversation is if you are going to stay in conversation with only people who agree with you, there isn't really much of a point. So the root of the incivility or the root of the discussion is why so much in intensity. Why so much angst? Well, oftentimes I find that there are bad actors. Now, there are bad actors on both sides. This is a truism. And I notice, yes, there are bad actors on the Christian side. There, there are Christians who are just out to, like, bust your balls, period. Um, and then there are atheists who... It's funny because the word anti-theist was... Uh, the word anti-theist was thrown out by a woman in the conversation, but she seemed to be using it a different way than I have always known it to me. Whenever I have come upon somebody labeling themselves an anti-theist or saying I'm an anti-theist or, or, you know, putting on their profile pic, anti-theist, I kind of take it as watch out, anti-theist, <laughs> watch out for this person because they're out there, out to, they're out to mess you up. Um, now, according to her, no. And this person was, was not particularly an aggressive person. Usually I associate anti-theist with triggered anti-theist looking a rumble, not really interested in having a reasonable conversation. Now, that's not necessarily given because she was using it a different way than I had perceived the word. Um, but just so you know, if, as for me, when I see the word anti-theist, I take, I, you might as well say, beware. Anti-theist. Beware. This is because I have come across in my own experience. There are plenty of atheists who I know on Twitter. Most of my friends on Twitter are atheists, in fact. Um, I now have a group of Christian friends that I associate with. But other than that, most of the people I interact with on Twitter on a daily basis, I don't really go on Twitter every day anymore. But most of the people I associate with are, in fact, atheists. Uh, we don't do a lot of discussing, though. We we got long past the conversations of, you know, you got any evidence for God? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Let's talk about something else. Okay. Let's talk about movies. Whatever. Um, we got long past those conversations, so we have civil conversations every single time. The There's really no good reason for there to be any angst-ridden triggered out conversations. I find that there is a there's a a percentage of the population in the atheist community, but I would I would guess it at somewhere around thirty percent, who aren't really looking to have a conversation to begin with at all. They're just looking to fuck to to run you down. They're looking to to bust your chops.
looking to mess with you, looking to, you know, for you to say something so that they can get in your face and, you know, more or less humiliate you seems to be the agenda that if I, if I had to be completely honest as to what they are trying to accomplish, it feels like they're trying to humiliate you. And, you know, you can say that that's because there, there has been a, a bunch of excuses used, like, you know, I can ridicule your faith. Most famously by Christopher Hitchens came out with a meme that floats around is it's, it's really okay for me to ridicule your faith because that's not ridiculing you. And I'm really glad that you made an excuse for absolutely atrocious, obnoxious behavior, but that ain't so. No, you ridicule someone's faith or you ridicule their ideas. You are ridiculing them. Do not excuse that behavior and write it off as, oh, I'm just being really hardcore against Christianity. No, you're not. Usually. No, you aren't. <laughs> Sorry. On the receiving end of the behavior, I find that if somebody has given themselves permission to quote unquote ridicule my faith, that is indistinguishable from ridiculing me. Period. Almost always. I've had someone jump on my timeline and, you know, sample five of my little five of my tweets and go ha 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 look at look at what this person says that's not ridiculing my faith that has nothing to do with my faith that is try and and you may pretend that that's what you are doing but that is not the agenda as as for me on the receiving end of the behavior i can promise you quite clearly that is not really what is going on you are trying completely and utterly to ridicule me and that is what is really going on inside of you that is your goal. That is what you really want to do. It's obvious when you're on the receiving end of the behavior. It's obvious. It's not a discussion about faith. It's not a discussion about what I believe. I'm perfectly willing to have that with anybody. I don't have it often with the people who show up on Twitter because they're not really looking to have a real discussion. They're looking to, you know, score some aggression points against you so they can crawl off into their corner and say, look, look at what I said to Craig. Look at what I said to this guy, blah. You know, Christians do that too? Yes, absolutely. But I don't support it when Christians do it. I don't condone it when Christians do it. If I see any Christians do it, I'll call them out and say, look, cut the crap. Cut the crap. We're supposed to be better than that. We're supposed to be held to a higher standard. I'll tell them plain and simple. So, just letting you know, there are different reasons why the lack of civility. But in general... If you find yourself engaged in conversations where there's, you know, often you're in conflict and there's very little lack of civility, look at your own agenda in the matter because I very rarely do. Why? Because I'm not looking to get aggressive with people. That's not why I'm on Twitter. It's not what I'm trying to do. So, therefore, it almost seems to never happen. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, thank you.